Hey guys, so we're going to begin uh, chapter 8 all on rational functions and we're going to start specifically today with inverse variation uh, talking about inverse functions, what it means to be an inverse. So our objectives uh, are going to answer the question what does it mean to be inverses? So we're going to recognize and use inverse variation and use joint and other variations as well. Alright, for our vocab, um, an equation uh, that's a direct variation has the form y equals kx which we learned about in like chapter 2 at the beginning of the year and inverse variation is in the form xy equals k or y equals k divided by x um, so it can mean anything or x equals y divided by k any of those three things they all mean the same thing so as um, x increases y decreases they're opposites so um, yeah, that's inverse variation so is the relationship between the variables a direct variation, an inverse variation, or neither one? And then write a function that models them. So I have uh, my x values are 2, 4, 10, 15, and my y values are 15, 7.5, 3, and 2. So what's happening to x and y? Well, as x is increasing, y appears to be decreasing. Now to find out if it is um, a variation, we need to do that. Um, x times y equals k. So if we multiply each one of these, they should be the same number. So 2 times 15 is 30. 4 times 7.5 is 30. 10 times 3 is 30. 15 times 2 is 30. Since these are all the same, it is an inverse variation. So you can see that um, x and y um, are have uh, it's a constant that when you multiply them, so this would be an inverse variation. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try these three. I'm going to have you compare them with your partner. Um, this will be the first part of your lesson check. I have another one that you're going to do um, in a minute. So determining an inverse variation, suppose x and y vary inversely, and x equals 4 when y equals 12. So if we know they vary inversely, then we know that um, y equals k divided by x, or k equals x times y, which we already did. So to find that constant, we just take 4 times 12. And 4 times 12 is 48. So our inverse variation is um, y equals 48 over x. So we did that, and there's our function. Um, so what does our graph look like? Go ahead and put that into your graphing calculator, and then change your window so you can see what an inverse vari variation looks like. And then to find what y is when x equals 10, you just plug in 10, 48 divided by 10 is 4.8. So your y value that corresponds with 10 is 4.8. Okay, here's um, part two of your um, lesson check. So I want you to write a model, take a look at the graph, see how it's different from the one that we looked at before, and then find y when x equals two. So go ahead and make that into an equation. All right, now we're going to make a model. Um, so either our class is very missions-minded or you know we're Earth-friendly. Um, you know, that's fun with Missions Week coming up and stuff. So your math class has decided to pick up litter each weekend in a local park, and each week there's approximately the same amount of litter. The table shows the number of students who worked each of the first four weeks and the project of the project and the time needed for pickup. So here's our chart. So the first week there were three students, it took 85 minutes, then five students, 51 minutes, 12 students, 21 minutes, and 17 students took 15 minutes to clean up the park. So let's go ahead and write a function that models this data. Since we're talking about exponent or inverse variations, um, this is probably going to be an inverse variation because it makes sense that the more people there are, the less time it takes to um, clean up, right? I think so. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So what's a function that models the data? Well, first we need to find out what our constant is between the three of these. So um, if we multiply 3 times 85, 5 times 51, 12 times 21, and 17 times 15, what numbers do we get? 
um, inverse variation, almost all of them equal about 255. So our inverse variation is going to be y equals 255 divided by x. So the minutes divided by the number of people that there are. So there's our function. Oh, that's all I needed was the function. Well, that's cool. Alright, uh, we also have combined variations. Um, so these are going to be jointly, um, we have a few more words. So V varies jointly with X and Y. So what that means is um, it's a direct variation with both X and Y. So Z equals a constant times X times Y. So jointly means direct. And if Z varies jointly with X and Y and inversely with W, that means we still have the Z equals KXY, but then the inversely part is divided by W. Um, directly with X and inversely with the product W and Y, it's Z equals KX divided by WY. So jointly means direct variation, inversely means inverse and don't forget to use your constant. A lot of students when they do these they forget to include the K. So don't forget that. K multiple choice. The number of bags of a grass seed N needed to reseed a yard varies directly with the area A to be seeded and inversely with the weight W of a bag of seed. If it takes two three pound bags to seed an area of 3600 feet squared, how many three pound bags will seed 9000 feet squared? Okay, so we need to look at our words. We have directly and inversely. So we need to go ahead and make an equation for that. So the number of bags we need are constant, times our area, and divided by the weight of the bags. So let's go ahead and plug in those first numbers. So two bags for um, 3,600 square feet times a constant divided by three. Well, if we solve that for K, we multiply by three divided by 3,600 we get um, 1 over 600 is our constant. So that means our equation is n equals our area divided by 600 times the weight of the bags. So if our area is now 9,000, you plug that in um, for that divided by the 3, and you should get that n equals 5 bags. So you'll need 5 bags in order to seed that area. And that's it. We're done. So there's lesson 8-1. Um, I hope you have a great day.